Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Pastor JD at New Life Church, and we're glad that you're part of the service. We are looking forward to God doing some great things this evening. And so we invite you to join us for service at six o'clock on Sunday evening. And we're going to go into the service now and see what God has for us. I'll be back just after the service for a few closing comments. Uh, wink at me if you're in some type of ministry. We don't raise hands, we wink, you know what I'm saying? We do that. I know that the majority of you guys are, and that's what this is, is geared towards, um, which is good. I'm glad you're here. Um, I grew up in, uh, in Middle Tennessee, a um, little town at that time, which is now a big town, uh, Columbia, Tennessee. And uh, in the summer, uh, one of the greatest things that I got to do is go fishing on the Tennessee River. And my great had an old uh, fishing boat, and he had a passion for fishing uh, like I have never seen. Uh, it, was, it was incredible. Uh, and so I would get to go with him in the summertime, and then when I was home on leave, I would take him fishing. And, uh, but his main fishing partner was his wife. And uh, she, she is a, a little lady. My granddad has passed, but uh, my grandmother, we call her Granny, uh, she is still with us. Uh, and she is a, a woman of small stature, but she is an incredibly strong woman. She grew up um, on a farm, and uh, while growing up, she didn't have indoor plumbing as she was being raised, right? It's just so different now to think about the smartphones and the different things, um, you know, we've got, we've got commodes now in homes that you can command it to flush, right? Voice activated. Different time. And she's a tough lady, and she loved uh, and, and, and still loves my granddad, even though he's gone. And, but she hated fishing. She hated it more, I mean, with a passion. But she would go with him because she knew that, uh, you know, as a spouse, sometimes you do things you don't want to do right? You do it for the benefit of the other person. You do it to honor them. And that's what she did. Uh, one time uh, she got ready to go fishing and my granddad dropped the, uh, the boat and the tongue of the boat that hooks up to the, to the hitch. He dropped it on her foot, you know, several thousand pounds of force, right? And she still went fishing that day. She went, waited to go to the hospital until after the day was over. I mean, this lady's tough. But uh, one thing that she did that I want to share with you that drove my granddad crazy was when she would go fishing, um, often she either wouldn't bait the hook and throw the line out, right? Remember, she hates fish, hates fishing. Or if she did get a bite and caught one, they only catfish. That's my, my granddad considered that the only fish, but the greatest fish known to man was a catfish. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so the other thing that she would do is when the line would move, and she knew, you know, catfish have a very distinct bite how they move a pole. Well, she would let it linger or she would let it play long enough in hopes that it would get off, right? And hopefully that my granddad who was on the front of the boat wouldn't notice what was going on in the back of the boat and, uh, and, and she wouldn't have to touch the fish. So why do I tell you this? Because the title of this message is, Have You Checked Your Worm Lately? Right? That's the title. Have you checked your worm lately? And uh, not only is it, is it kind of catchy, that's not really the point. The real the point is, is sometimes we think we're fishing, but we're just in the boat. Amen? We think that we're fishing because we look like we're fishing. We've got the gear on. We've got the pole. We don't have the bait. And so what it appears that we're doing, we're not doing. And, and that's why when Christ says, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. It's so incredible that we, that we don't get messed up on what it is that His purpose was. Did you know that we live in a time right now where we have lost our purpose? The majority of the Americans in our culture, the majority of the people in our town, we'll keep this very local, we have forgotten or we have lost or we have never discovered our true purpose. I, uh, I think it's interesting that we have more people uh, statistically. I mean, you can look at this. It's, it's overwhelming. We have more people uh, taking medicine for depression and anxiety and, and stress-related things than ever before. 
With the advancement of technology, the advancement of medicine, and I'm not taking anything away from doctors or medicine, I appreciate them. Amen? Can we appreciate medicine? However, I, I wonder if sometimes when we lose our purpose, I'm wondering if another emotion doesn't begin to take control. And, and, and one of the problems with losing your purpose is you begin to do a lot of inward concentration of how you're doing. Do you know the Word of God is more about an outward expression than what is going in internally? It's more about dying to self than self-indulgence. Amen? It says, I've got to pick up the cross daily, and I have got to die to myself daily. It's a choice. But see, when we don't do that and we don't understand what our purpose is, it gets confusing real quick. And we've become very, very creative in ways to fulfill our preferences and skipped over our purpose. And so tonight I'd like to ask you a question before I before I actually read the text here, but what does serving God mean to you? Because how you answer that question, uh, it, it dictates a lot about where you currently are in the season that you are in life, right? And I believe that this message uh, could be incredibly encouraging, incredibly eye-opening, uh, but it could also be very condemning. And that is not my intention. My intention tonight is just to reevaluate where we currently are. Where you go from here is up to you. Amen? Um, and so you have to answer the question, why do you serve? The majority of the people that come out on a Sunday night, hands down, have been saved and saved for a long time. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. And we currently are either serving, have served, or uh, are getting ready to serve in, in any capacity, from the nursery to the prison ministries. Like anywhere in between, we are servers that are in this house tonight. So the question remains, why do you serve? Right? Right? Uh, I, I knew a woman one time, and uh, the reason that she started serving later on in life is because she had lost her husband. And so uh, she had a lot of extra time, and, and she, she began to serve a, a local church and then moved away. And, and guess what? There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not the purpose of serving, right? I, I know people uh, that serve because um, it, it makes them feel good. And guess what? Serving can make you feel good at times. It can make you feel bad at times too, but it can make you feel good at times. But that's not why we serve. I, I know some people, uh, they serve because they feel like it is, it is an obligation to serve. And although we can do that, that's not the main purpose of serving. You know what the main purpose of serving is? It aligns with what is missing to the main purpose of why we live life. It is why we are here. You don't have to make it complicated, and you don't have to overemphasize the point. We serve because that is why God has placed us on this earth. And just so we're very, very clear in what the window of opportunity looks like, it doesn't last forever. So your time of service is limited to when you will leave this place. Amen? And so I had a roofer the other day. And he told me, he said, Matthew, you ought to, where's Delbert at? Delbert didn't fall for this either. This roofer told me, he said, Matthew, you can get a 50-year shingle put on your house. 50-year shingle. And, and, and it, you, can, you can double, uh, it's going to double the price, right? Me and Delbert, we're out. That's all we heard him say. That's it. We ain't listen to him no more. It's going to be double the price, but it will last for 50 years. It's a shingle. And I, and I looked at the guy and I thought it and I, I, I calculated my age plus 50. It took a minute and then I realized, I'm not going to be here in 50 years. Amen. <laughs> like I, I, I literally won't be here in 50 years. And so I, I thought to myself, you know, man, I'm just transitioning to the kingdom. What I'm doing right now is I am investing my life because I am transitioning to when God's kingdom reigns. It, it's not here yet. This is a temporary place. But the purpose doesn't change. The same purpose that we have today is the one that we will have for all eternity. Isn't that good news? We might as well start doing now what we will do for the rest of eternity. We might as well start doing and getting used to it. There's going to be no surprise. I will serve the King of Kings until the day that I die. And guess what? I will serve Him after it. 
It kind of brings things under, in, in, into order, doesn't it? I want to read you this scripture. And I, 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 all I want you to do is, many of you guys have heard this, all I want you to do is come in with a new focus. Because, you know, the Holy Spirit, it's the same Bible that we read every day. You can read a scripture one day, and then the next day the Holy Spirit totally changes what it means to you. He totally awakens a verse in your life that you have known your whole life, but you hold fast to it for a season. And so this is what it says. And, and if you want to turn to it, that's great. I'm just going to read it. But it's in Luke 12, uh, verse 35. And it says to be ready for the Lord's coming. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps burning as though you are waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. The servants who are ready and waiting for his return will be rewarded. I tell you the truth, he himself will seat them, put on an apron, and serve them as they sit and eat. My question tonight is, does that type of servant reflect who you are? It's interesting to me what this scripture says. At all times be ready, whether you are 8 or 88, continue to be ready. Why? The king is coming home. He is literally coming to snatch us up and we will arise with Him. His kingdom will be established. There is no question about that. That's not even up for debate. The only question is when, right? Now this isn't a new message. Janice was hearing this message when she was knee-high to a grasshopper. She's heard this many times. This is not new information. But the same expectation has to remain. And so it's interesting, the, the scripture says, be dressed for service. Uh, the, the King James Version, it says something like, make sure your loins are girded. The area south of your ribs, make sure your loins are girded. And, and I, I like that because it emphasizes that there is something that changes about your garment, how you wear it. There is something that changes internally when you are ready to serve at all times, expecting the trumpet to sound. There's a difference how you live your life when you're expecting it. And so part of that, when I, when I looked up some, some commentary on it, they said that, that in that culture, they used to wear long robes, like, like a Almost like when a bride comes down that has a long train on her robe, right? I guess the guys got to wear that too, evidently. And what they would do is they knew that you could not be uh, well equipped to serve with a long flowing robe hanging off you. That serves a different purpose. That's more aesthetics maybe or, or when you're casually hanging out. So they would take the robe and they would tuck it into their belt, why? Because now my feet can move. Now I can function the way that I should. Why? Because my lamp is burning because I'm waiting for my master to come home and he can come home at any moment. The second thing is, is your lamp burning? When your lamp burns, it takes resources, it takes energy, it, it takes finances, right? Why? Because you constantly are putting oil in it. You are constantly holding it and you are on the alert for who it is that is coming. And I think that this message tonight is for every one of us, myself included. I, I am in the same boat. Sometimes I have my pole out there and there's not a worm on it. I'm going through the motions because I know there's Sunday morning, there's Sunday night. I know there's Wednesday. I know there's going to be some times that I'm counseling teenagers during the week. I know that it is consistent and constant. But i got to tell you, I have got to do a better job. We have got to do a better job. We have got to be ready because the king is coming. The king is coming. Have you checked your worm lately? Have you looked and taken an inventory of where your ministry is currently and where you want it to go through the power and the authority of Jesus Christ? Have you done it lately? Have you done it often? Have you done it correctly? You see, our lives... As short as they are, and maybe as brief as uh, they are, is a better way to say it. It still echoes something. There is still a slogan. There is still a mission statement that we have to live by. 
And, and I'd, like to, I'd like to give you something just to laugh at for a moment if I can, but see how many of these, um, these uh, statements or slogans of, no, uh, of really known companies do you recognize, right? So the first one is just do it. Who's that? There, Nike, okay. Um, think different. Think different. Oh, John, you got to know this one. That's Apple. Everything he owns is made by Apple. Okay, where's the beef? Wendy. Oh, you like Wendy's? I like Wendy's. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Open happiness. I I really didn't know that. That was Coca-Cola. I'm not sure about that. The breakfast of champions. Wendy's. I'll give you you one more, and then I'll, 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 uh, I'll get to my point. Can you imagine if I just read those and had no point, and you just looked at me like... This guy, I don't know about him. So the last one is this, if I can find it. If not, we'll just, we'll just move on. Oh, yeah, I can find it. This is Ikea. Anybody bought anything from Ikea ever? Anybody ever ordered anything from Ikea? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Here it goes. It says, to create a better everyday life for many people. Guess what? They failed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because one time, me and my wife, we bought some furniture and you've ever heard the term some assembly required? Imagine, imagine a sofa. Co- uh, no, 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 no. It was, it was chairs, and they came in a box about this big. How did they do that? I mean, it was hours into this process, and I thought, Kara, we couldn't have saved that much money for this. That's right. My question is, what, 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 is, <laughs> what is the slogan of your life? Did you know that Christ had a slogan? That He had a mission statement? And in 2020, I think that it's important to, for you to know what it is. Uh, Big Josh shared with me his, his mission statement. It's stand, right? Stand. Powerful. It, it, Christ had one too. You know what His was? It came at an early age. Do you remember the story when He was, when he was uh, left behind in the caravan and He was found in the temple doing what? Preaching and teaching. And he said what? That's it. i, I got to be about my father's business. Amen? There is many, many distractions, but I've got to be about my father's business. That is a statement and a slogan that I have to live for. Why? Because that's my purpose. My purpose isn't this or that. My purpose is I was created to serve. And the sooner that we come to that realization, everything becomes a whole lot simpler. It doesn't become easier. It's not without trials. Because how many of you guys know ministry isn't easy? It, 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 I, I like this, this, this point, and I, and I want to say this because a lot of the men and women in this room that represents different areas of the body of Christ you guys don't get the spotlight. You guys may never hold a microphone in your hand. Some of you don't want to, and I I understand that. But it says your reward is coming. And and I'm not talking about a a trophy. And and I'm not talking about a letter. I'm not talking about a pat on the back. I'm not talking about a thank you. I'm talking about the King of Kings saying, this is your reward. You have accomplished what it is that your purpose was set forth. I I didn't get distracted. I, I didn't miss my mark. I didn't miss what it was that I was created for. And, and, and the reward is coming. I mean, I, I can dwell upon that thought because it's so much better than anything that we have seen here. Uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share one more story with you, uh, and then I'm going to get ready to close. Uh, I found myself on an all-paid vacation last year. Somebody literally paid for my whole family to go on vacation. Uh, have you ever heard of that? No, because of your expressions. Incredible. Literally paid for the whole family. And I found myself with the beach in front of us, incredible, and then all you could eat food behind us, right? My wife stayed on the beach. She got burnt, right? And I stayed where the food was, right? That's amen, Rick. That's how we roll. And there was a conversation that I took away from this in- incredible opportunity. There was a bunch of pastors there, a few pastors. And he said, you know, the American dream is a lie, right? That's all he said. 
The American dream is a lie. And I thought about that for a long time. And in and, and, and the biblical Sunday school uh, version of me uh, knew that that was true. But the part that lives in this earth that sees these guys, uh, you know, driving nice cars, uh, driving nice boats, uh, living in nice homes, and, and, and the, the lure of, of what uh, ultimately I was born with in the flesh, it will suck you in at times, right? And, and so when I say the American dream is dead, that doesn't mean that it's not hard to escape from, Right? There's always keeping up with the Joneses. There is always a comparison. It keeps, it keeps cropping up, right? But the reality is, when you acquire the things that you set out to acquire, when you get the job or you get the promotion or you have the title of what it is that you set out that you desired, you get to that point and you look around and say, oh, well now I've got to do more. And now I've got to obtain more. Why? It didn't fit into the purpose. Not only did it not fit into the purpose that you were created, it also didn't and wasn't able to fulfill you. Why? Because we came to serve. Jesus said, I came to serve, not be served. Amen. He said, he said, no, it's going to be me that gets down on my hands and knees and washes the feet to include the enemy, to include the one that had betrayed him. Didn't matter. It is going to be him that sits down, that takes the position of a servant. We're talking about God. Sometimes it's, it's easy to skip over that because we think, oh, I'm not touching your feet. It's easy to skip over that, but then you realize, we're, we're talking about God. Are you kidding me? If he was not too good to serve anybody and everybody, we cannot be too good to serve anybody and everybody. And that's why I say that the American dream, don't get caught up into it. I love America. I serve this country. I I love it with all my heart. And I'm not against boats. I'm not against planes. Matter of fact, if you have them, invite me and I'll ride with you in them. Amen? I'm not against any of those. I'm not against making a lot of money so you can give a lot of money. I'm not against any of those things. It doesn't offend me one time. Only if you keep in mind that's not the purpose. It's not the purpose. It can't be the purpose. Because if that's the purpose, then it becomes unfulfilled. And if the American dream is a lie, then there has to be a truth. And the truth is, if you want to live a life that is fulfilled, and if you want to fulfill your purpose, and if you want to get to the place where you say, I'm going to serve you, Jesus, with all my heart, with all my mind, and with all my soul, then and only then are you fulfilling your purpose. That's it. That's it. I don't want to complicate anything. The fact remains that when we leave this place, we will make a decision. And notice at no point in time have I said anything about different ways to serve. I haven't directed you to the sign-up sheet. Why? Because it has nothing to do with taking advantage of an emotional opportunity. It has everything to do with the condition of your heart presently. That's it. It is a change and a reflection of the heart of a servant. And for us to have that, we have to say, Lord Jesus, you're going to have to change me. Because I've been caught up in the rat race. I've been caught up in this or that. And I need to redefine what it is my purpose is. There's enough people that serve in this room to radically change this local church. There's enough people in this room to radically change your family and what your current mission statement or your slogan is. That's it. And so tonight as I close, I would like to, I'd like to do something tonight. And the, and the reason that uh, I've left about 15 minutes is because my closing thought is going to be an important one. Raise your hand if, you, if you've served the Lord in any capacity for more than 20 years. The majority. The majority. After 20 years, guess what, guys? You get tired. Amen? After 20 years, you get hurt. Amen? There is not a ministry that you can serve in that you will not get hurt, both in this church and any other church that you ever attend. That is my guarantee. If you serve the Lord, you will get hurt. I will guarantee you that. Your feelings will get hurt. 
your pride will get stepped on, and you will feel unimportant. Why? Nothing that says you're going to be rewarded in serving the local church. It's not in here. Your reward comes from serving who? God. Do you see the difference? See, in my mind, I'm no longer serving the local church. I'm no longer serving a person. And everything that I do is a reflection that flows out of me because first and foremost, I'm serving God. I, I, can't get, I can't get tripped up in, 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 the, in, the, in the outflow of what it is. And so, if you've ever been hurt, you understand that it makes you less likely to continue to serve or it may make you think, I don't want to serve anymore. Is that a true statement? Um, I, uh, I often have to to remind myself of that simple question that we asked before. Why do we serve? Because you're going to hear comments, and you've heard comments. Many of you guys were probably, no, you know, I was just going to say, many of you guys have served before I was born. I'm way, no, that's not going to work anymore. I forgot. Janice, I forgot. <laughs> many of you guys were serving when I was probably in high school, though. I can, I can say that. And you've, and you've done an incredible job. But I believe that some of us have gotten weary, have gotten tired, and rightfully so. Uh, I, can, I can think about asking people to help out on Wednesday nights and different things. And in the back of my mind, I think, uh, what if, what if uh, he or she tells me, come back in 20 years and, and tell me what you think? Why? Because they've served for 20 years. You see what I'm saying? It's been a long time coming. And there's people in this room that, uh, that once sang on the worship team and no longer sing, right? There's people in this room that once started a ministry that nobody came to, nobody supported, right? There's people in this room that have felt like nobody knows what it is that I do. I feel unappreciated. I feel left out. And the message for you tonight is your reward is coming. Every ounce that you have poured out, every time that you've spoke the name of Jesus, every time you left the recliner to go serve, every time you put up with uh, crazy children like we do in the back and, and, and you take knives from them and you break up fights, every time the name of the Lord is lifted and proclaimed, there is rewards. But we're not doing it for the reward. We're doing it because He's worthy. He is worthy. I'm not interested in your 50-year shingles. This is a temporary place, and I'm just passing through. But as long as I'm here, my lamp will burn bright, and my cloak will be tucked into my belt because I am ready to serve. And there is sacrifices, and there is hurt that comes with it. Know that. But it's worth it. It's worth it. Isn't it wonderful to experience God's grace and His mercy? To see Him move in our services? I contend that those that come out on Sunday night... They're really driving hard to push in and find the very best from God. And so he in no way disappointed us tonight. We're glad you joined. If you don't have a church home, please make New Life your church home. We look forward to having you with us. We love you. We thank you.